hope you're doing well. My name is Katie and I upload book-related videos every single Wednesday and today I'm filming one of my favorite videos not just within booktube but within YouTube overall and that is any sort of declutter video. Essentially just watching people get rid of things is my version of porn. I think it might have to do with the fact that I moved so much growing up that it was just very habitual for me to get rid of things and only keep the things I really loved. So for me I only like to keep books if I think I'll reread them or if they have some kind of special significance to me. If they're just a book I kind of liked or actually disliked, I definitely prefer to donate them to Goodwill or something like that. So I know a lot of people do the disclaimer apologizing for getting rid of books, especially if it's, you know, the favorite book of someone who's watching. I'm not gonna do that. I think we're all adults and we can be mature about this. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll just start grabbing things randomly. First we have, this is gonna all collapse eventually. So first we have A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. Now the writing in this was good. The illustrations are beautiful. I just personally didn't love it and I know I probably won't go back and reread it. But it's things like this I get really excited about someone else being excited to come across a really nice copy of this at Goodwill for just a couple dollars because I know although I liked it I didn't love it so I'm excited for somebody else to love it. Then we have Leviathan by Scott Westerfeld. I got this on sale and most of these I actually have read. This I have not. This is one of those things where I just picked it out because it was on a sale and I was kind of intrigued. I forget what that series was that was so popular maybe eight years ago by Scott Westerfeld, but I remember that I never really could connect to any of his characters and just didn't enjoy his writing very much overall. Then we have Dean Koontz, The Taking. A lot of you might remember that Intensity is one of my favorite books of all time. It's, that's a horror novel by him. And The Taking was good. The ending irritated me a little bit. It was just a little too Bible heavy. Um, but this one is solid, but I don't love it. Then we have The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. No, I actually really loved this book, but I cannot get into the second one for the life of me. I've tried probably three times and gotten a quarter of the way through it, and I just know I'm never actually going to continue on with the series, so there's no need to have this. Then we have The Realm of Possibility by David Levithan, and this is one where I just don't think it's for me. I've tried to get into it a few times, and I know the writing style is very unique, and I applaud him for that, but I just can't really get into it. Now we're getting to a few from early high school, so we have, you can see I had a vampire phase, because I have Vampire Kisses by Ellen Schreiber, which was fun, and Got Fangs. But look at that cover. This might be the worst book cover of all time. Not that I care about things like that, but it's pretty bad. And this is Got Fangs by Katie Maxwell. Both these books are actually quite fun. But again, I just know I'm not going to reread them. Then, of course, a staple of the early 2000s for teen girls, The Princess Diaries. This was actually a really fun series. I think I read four or five within it. And I will say, because you can probably hear I'm slightly dropping these onto the ground, someone got pretty upset in my last book on haul because I was dropping them. And I just want to say, these are books, not eggs. They're not going to crack. I'm dropping them this way, and they're going like two feet. So... None of the pages are getting messed up. It's fine. I thought I'd given away all the Sookie Stackhouse books, but I guess I still had this one. This is Dead to the World, and I would actually recommend this series if you want a good vampire novel series. I didn't finish it. I think I got maybe six books in or so, but it is fun. Well, although I just like to tell myself that that final season of True Blood never happened, because if you saw it, you know how terrible it was. And here we have 100 Wicked Little Witch Stories, which was a very odd big book. I remember reading a few of these when I was, when did this come out? How old was I? So this is from 1995, so I was four when this was published. I was not four when I was reading this, but I do remember being really little, flipping through some of these stories and being really disturbed, so it did a good job. I apologize that the lighting is changing a lot, but unfortunately we're working with natural light. Here we have two summer books that were both equally incredibly depressing, but decent. We have Still Summer by Jacqueline Mitchard, which is about a few girls who who meet when they're middle-aged and I think their boat's attacked by pirates. A lot more depressing than I thought it'd be. And then Summer Sisters by Judy Bloom, which again, very depressing book considering you think you're picking up a nice summertime read, but they were both pretty good actually. And then we have a couple of classics. Uh, this was a school book, The Crucible by Arthur Miller. I did like this, but again, I'm not going to go back and reread it and I didn't love it. But next we have Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. I have tried maybe five 
five times to read this and I just cannot do it. And I think I mentioned this in a previous video and someone commented and said, well, that's probably not the best Jane Austen book to try and start off with. But so if you do have a recommendation for a Jane Austen novel, let me know. Then we have Boink by Mary Roach. I did, I think I read Stiff, which was about the curious case of human corpses and things that are done to them. Boink, or not Boink, Bonk, is not surprisingly nonfiction about sex. And it is really interesting, but I've just found with things like this, I just prefer to read research articles. But Mary Roach's books are fantastic, so I would really recommend her. Then we have An Abundance of Me, Catherine's by John Green, and I just honestly have no desire to read this. I did really like The Fault in Our Stars. I didn't really like Looking for Alaska, and for whatever reason, I've just lost most of my desire to read any of his books, so yeah. Then we have Salem Falls by Jodi Pico. I did go through a Jodi Pico stage. Who hasn't? Uh, I think I've read maybe four of her books and I liked this one. I just get really sick of her twist endings that just pop out of nowhere and I always feel like her books just could be like 300 pages shorter. Not, not 300, but a fair amount shorter. I just don't think they warrant the length that they ever are, but I understand why a lot of people do like her. Next, I feel a little, well, I won't say I feel bad because I don't. It's paper, it's a book, someone else will go onto it and love it. But we have The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. The reason I'm passing this on is because I, I've seen the movie version of this three, four times and I absolutely love it. I enjoyed it so much more than the book. I, I think I'm possibly just not a fan of the diary format, but it's not surprising that if you liked the book, you will love the movie just because I think the author both wrote and directed and casted basically everything for the movie. Here we have Jane Eyre by Emily Bronte, and I think my mom loves this book, so, so before I donate this, I'll ask her if she wants it. But this is another one of the ones where I tried to get through it a number of times and just couldn't. I can never get past that stage where she's a child at the boarding school. And I know a lot of people like to force themselves to finish a book so that they can say they finished and read it, and I've just never understood that mentality. So next we have Wild Roses by Deb Coletti. I know a lot of people really loved Sarah Dessen. That was their teenage author that they loved. I adored her books as well, but Deb Coletti was probably one of my favorites. She was like Sarah Dessen, but just a little bit more realistic and a little bit more depressing, so she was more my cup of tea, but Wild Roses was not one of my favorites by her. Then is Sailor Twain by Mark Siegel. This is a graphic novel I have been really excited to get, and I read it and I liked the artwork, but I just didn't think the story or the writing was very interesting whatsoever. Then is The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follet. I did read this. It's a giant book. All I have to say about Ken Follet is he sure likes writing about rape. I've, I've read a couple of other books by him and they just all have tons of rape and it's really weird. That's not why I'm getting rid of it, um, it's just because I didn't love the book and I know there's no way I'm rereading it again, but let me know if that's something you've noticed when reading his books. You know, I guess trigger warning for rape for any of his books. If you see his last name, that's probably going to be in one of his books, but yeah, a little weird. And finally, we have Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. I liked this. If you enjoy travel books, I would recommend it. I adore her writing style, but it's not one of my favorite travel books, and I know the likelihood of me rereading it is pretty low. So that was my book unhaul. Let me know if you enjoyed or disliked any of the books I mentioned in this video. Also, let me know if you enjoy these decluttering unhaul type videos. Again, I upload videos every single Wednesday, so I will put the subscribe link on your screen here and also down in the info bar. So I hope you guys are having a great start to your summer, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.